Okay, so welcome to this third video on tetracycline antibiotics. So, uh, firstly, we are revising the process of translation within uh, a uh, bacterial cell. So we've seen so far that you start off with this 30S uh, ribosomal subunit bound to the three initiation factors, initiation factor 1, initiation factor 2, and initiation factor 3, and also a GTP molecule. Now, the first step is to uh, bind your mRNA molecule to your 30S ribosomal subunit, and this is done via the shine dalgano sequence, which generally includes this AGGA sequence, uh, which then binds to the 30S ribosomal subunit. Okay, the next step is to take a uh, formal methionine charged tRNA, um, and uh, which has the complementary anticodon for the start codon on your mRNA, which is AUG, and bind that to make a uh, 30S initiation complex, which is this um, 30S ribosomal subunit, still with initiation factor 1 and 2 and the GTP, with an mRNA and this formal methionine tRNA bound now uh, to the start codon. Okay, and in that process, uh, the third initiation factor cleaves off. Right, the next step is to bind the 50S ribosomal subunit uh, to your 30S initiation complex to make the 70S initiation complex. Uh, and for that process, uh, what happens is the first, the second, uh, and the first and the second initiation factors cleave off, and the GTP is hydrolyzed to GDP and inorganic phosphate. Okay, uh, right, so you now have this 70S initiation complex, which consists of this 30S subunit and this 50S subunit, and don't be disturbed by the fact that the 70S is not the 30S plus the 50S, which would give you an 80S. Uh, it's a more complicated unit than just that. Okay, right, so we want to now see the elongation process of this, um, or that this ribosome is going to undertake, because it's now ready to start actually building the polypeptide uh, from this piece of mRNA. Okay, so let's go over the page and look at the elongation process. So, uh, if we draw the, in fact, actually, well, actually, we'll draw it again. We'll, if we draw the uh, 70S initiation complex here, Okay, so this is the 30S ribosomal subunit here. Then in between the, um, the 30S ribosomal subunit and the 50S ribosomal subunit, we have the piece of mRNA, which I'm denoting like this. So this is our piece of mRNA here, messenger RNA. Uh, this is our 30S ribosomal subunit here, so this is 30S. Okay, and then we have this 50S um, ribosomal subunit here. And together, that forms the whole ribosome. Right. Okay. Now, on the mRNA, you have this shine dalgano sequence, which is what originally bound to the uh, 30S ribosomal subunit. And you also have this start codon, this AUG, on the mRNA here, which is bound to our anticodon, uh, which is UAC. Um, uh, and the, um, that tRNA, which has the complementary anticodon to the start codon, has a formal methionine group bound to it. Okay, right. So, uh, this site, which the um, formal methionine tRNA and the uh, start codon are currently in, is what is known as the P site of uh, the ribosome. So, here is the P site. So there are three sites on the ribosome where uh, you can have um, tRNAs bound to their complementary codon on the uh, mRNA and with an amino acid on the other side. And this is, uh, one of them is the P site, which is in the middle. Then there's another site over here called the A site, which is where the next uh, tRNA is going to come in, basically. Okay, so the next codon along on the mRNA, and this is a little bit badly drawn because what I really need to show is one codon ending and then the next codon along. So let's extend the start codon out to there. Basically, you then have the next codon along. So um, this pink bit consists of A, U, G, and then you'll have three more um, organic bases, basically. So you'll have slot, 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 where you can put in uh, uh, one of four organic bases to each of these. 
to create this next code on along, basically. So the next code on along is going to determine which um, which t tRNAs can come in because the next tRNA that comes in is going to have to have a complementary anticodon to uh, whatever free organic bases are in here. So what will happen is a tRNA with the complementary anticodon will come in and it will have a certain amino acid bound to it, basically, uh, and that amino acid that's bound to it is specific to the anticodon of the tRNA. So um, the anticodon will be complementary to the codon, i.e. the uh, free organic bases that were on the, excuse me, the mRNA strand, and uh, determined by the anticodon of the tRNA will be what amino acid is loaded here. Okay, right. So, um, there's a rather interesting story about how uh, the amino acid and the tRNA molecule, the amino acyl tRNA, as it's called, actually gets into this A site, which is this next site where the um, next uh, tRNA with the amino acid attached to it needs to come in. So, basically, what happens is that um, amino acyl tRNAs, as they are called, which is just basically a, a tRNA linked to an amino acid. So this is an amino acyl tRNA. They are delivered into the A site of the ribosome by a complex of proteins, so amino acyl tRNA. Okay, so let me show you this complex of proteins which deliver them. So one of the proteins which delivers them is something known as elongation factor TU. So I'll just denote it TU. Often people do just denote it TU. Strictly speaking, this is elongation factor TU. Elongation factor TU. Uh, but often people will just denote it TU. Now, the elongation factor TU has bound to it a molecule of GTP, basically. Okay, and what happens is if this um, amino acyl tRNA has an anticodon here, so free um, organic bases which are complementary to the free organic bases on uh, this codon, this next codon on the mRNA, then it will be able to come and bind in the A site. And basically the TU, the elongation factor TU with this GTP molecule is there to make sure that uh, this um, anticodon on this tRNA is actually complementary to the codon of the mRNA because you do not want to put in the incorrect tRNA because if you put in the incorrect tRNA then it may well have the incorrect amino acid there um, so uh, that would lead to a mutation it would lead to a um, you making a bad protein a protein that wasn't correct that wouldn't have the correct sequence of amino acids basically Okay, so that's the function of this elongation factor TU bound to GTP. It delivers the amino acyl tRNA into the A site, and once it's done that, once the uh, amino acyl tRNA is in the A site and it has checked that um, it is correct, i.e. that uh, this anticodon really does match uh, the codon of the mRNA, then it breaks off. And in order to break off, uh, the uh, GDP is hydrolyzed, uh, sorry, the GTP is hydrolyzed to GDP. So you end up with an elongation factor TU bound to GDP and an inorganic phosphate like this. Uh, so you break off that phosphate group, and when you hydrolyze that GTP, uh, the elongation factor TU cleaves off of the amino acyl tRNA and leaves it basically in that A site. Now, uh, in order to regenerate the amino acyl tRNAs, uh, then what happens is basically another elongation factor by the name of elongation factor TF. So elongation factor TS, elongation factor TS, which I again will denote by just a little square with TS written in it. Um, so this elongation factor TS basically binds to elongation factor TU and causes the G GDP molecule to break off. So you end up with TU, elongation factor TU, bound to elongation factor TS. Okay, now uh, what happens is that uh, TS assists 
elongation factor Tu in uh, binding it back to a molecule of GTP, firstly, and also uh, an amino acyl tRNA. So basically, what you're going to take in is you're going to take in an amino acyl tRNA, so uh, a tRNA that has its correct amino acid here. So this is an amino acyl tRNA, okay? Uh, and you're also going to take in a molecule of GTP. So here comes a molecule of GTP. And basically, what you're going to do is you're going to bind on the amino acyl tRNA to the TAU, and you're going to bind on this GTP to regenerate the amino acyl tRNA with the elongation factor TU and the GTP bound to it. So that's how you regenerate these amino acyl tRNAs with these elongation factor TU and the GTP. And obviously, when that happens, the uh, job of this elongation factor TS is complete, and it can go off. Okay. Right, so uh, that is basically how you regenerate uh, these um, structures which are providing amino acyl tRNAs to the A site. And basically, an amino acyl tRNA on its own cannot get into this A site of the uh, ribosome. It has to go in with this elongation factor Tu and GTP, which is there to make sure that you do not add in the incorrect um, uh, well, the incorrect tRNA and therefore the incorrect amino acid. Okay, and we'll continue this discussion in the next video.